Good morning, millennials. Welcome to the morning toast, or as this week's case, the morning matzah. We are very excited to be here. Jackie, my normal co-host, usually, uh, she's not here because she's moving today. She's very excited. So while she said she couldn't be here, she's really excited to be getting out of her apartment. And while I'm said she's not here, I'm really excited to have like a safe space for myself to talk about Taylor Swift as much as I it's want. A safe space here. because Snitch is here. If you guys don't know Snitch, you're a new toaster. Snitch is our little sister. Don't ask why we call her Snitch. It's like a long story, and honestly, I don't really know the genesis of it. Um, me neither. And she's just going to be here to co-host with me. Obviously, deliver the fast five, but we've kind of um centralized some of the topics around Taylor Swift just because like we are the biggest well I, I would say I'm the biggest Taylor Swift family uh family fan in, fan in the family and you're like number like one and a half okay I was gonna say two is mean but one and a half I'll take and one like and Jackie's half, always take. over here like claiming to be a Taylor Swift no fan, she's not but she's always like talking no, 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 shit no, 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 no. like it, and it's like then she like goes to the rep tour like and pretends that she's like having the best time of her life screaming every song but then you come on here and talk shit about her publicly. Yeah, no, and it's like that's I, not gonna fly. I firmly believe that like part of being a good stan is like being able to call people out like when they need it. Like just blindly loving someone isn't always healthy. Right, but calling her a piece of shit isn't being critical. Margot, I couldn't agree more. And like, okay, I'm a I'm a good tam stan. Like I can agree that like what Taylor did with the whole Kim and Connie thing like was shady. Like, I agree. And uh, I love I her agree. so much, and it pains me to say, but like she was wrong. Like she lied and then lied. So she lied and then lied. But Jackie was being so aggressive with me yesterday. Like you don't understand. I literally almost had tears in my eyes. Like I was getting so defensive, and like I wasn't doing a good like job of articulating my feelings because like I understand. Jackie's so articulate, and like she can make a point even if it's like the most wrong point yeah, ever. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, okay, okay. No, yeah, I would never want to argue with Jackie, especially like on a something platform. you're so passionate yeah, about. No. I would so never. So this is going to be just like I mean, there's so much going on in the world of Taylor Swift, and we'll do uh, we're going to deliver I the know. fast five. Obviously, and there's never anything going on in the world. Right, of Taylor so it's Swift. like a big day for us. It's a huge day for us, and tomorrow's going to be what day is it? Today's two the days from now. It's two days an even now. bigger day, bigger day for us. It's just it's all so exciting. You it's know? all so exciting. And I'm just so happy she's back to like looking her best. Me too. too. Oh my god. Like her she hair is in check. Her makeup looking. and her lip color is in check, and that is the most important. It's just it's all so good, and we're going to jump right in. We're going to do fast five. Um, two of the stories are Taylor Swift. Um, focused, but it is what it is. If you're not a Taylor Swift fan, just like get ready to convert. Yeah, get ready to convert. We're about to turn into turn you into some Swifties. But before we do that, let's talk about what we're doing tonight. Oh yeah. You, do you want to take the lead? You can do it. We are going to see Wicked. We're going to see Wicked for a million reasons. One, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Me too. I don't even remember the plot. Two, I'm so head over heels in love with the soundtrack that like I can't believe I haven't seen it like with a margarita in my hand. Oh yeah, we can do it. Yeah, it's like when we went, we were 12. Yeah, not and, even. And then three, the girl who plays Wicked, I forget her name. Alphabet? Green face. Oh yeah, Alphabet. She um, is... Her run ends in like two weeks and she follows me on Instagram and like I've been DMing her so like I wanted to see her. Yeah, yeah, And I think we're going to go backstage maybe like get her face painted green. Oh my God, I would die. No, I would die too. So just like we have that to look forward to. That's very exciting. I'm actually very excited. I don't know how I'm going to like, oh, it's very exciting. You're very excited. Yeah, is that you just, okay? You just said it like Ari Line Dyke. This is so exciting. No, his thing was. I love that. I love that. Nobody's like. What excites me? Excitement. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. It's going to be just like such a grand old time. I don't know how I'm not going to like belt out. Like people are going to yell at me because like. Yeah, I'm I feel like gonna... you're going to be real annoying. Like even when I saw Dear Evan Hansen, I only knew like the one song waving through a window and I still was like waving through the window. No, I like, feel like you're going to be like in the chair like with your hands. For sure. I know? hope I have an aisle seat so I can just like get some extra like movement for my self-expression. <laughs> you know, you need it. You need to do your art. Totally. It's just going to be, it's going to be great. Like I usually, I don't love going to the theater. Um, it's but annoying this is, to get there. It's annoying to get there, but this is, should we get dinner before or after you think? The show's before. at seven. Before. Shows are long. There's an intermission. We're going to yeah. be starving. We're and we can't have any of the snacks because they're not cake Oh my God, pee. true, because it's Passover. Okay, so we'll go somewhere before. Yeah. Oh, me and TBG went to the Palm. Yeah. Before we went to, okay, let's do that. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Sorry, I'm just making plans in my head. But <laughs> before we have the night of our lives, we do have to deliver the Fast Five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. So without further ado, let's jump right in, Snitch. And the first story is one that I just couldn't not talk about. And we have a picture if you're watching live. Taylor Swift is picture perfect in pastel gown at the Time 100 Gala. See pics and her performance. Taylor Swift is a real life princess according to Entertainment Tonight. The You Belong With Me singer stepped out in a breathtaking pastel gown to attend the 2019 Time 100 Gala at Lincoln Center in New York City on Tuesday. The Grammy winner looked divine in a peach and yellow strapless Jamin Dell gown with floral embroidery and billowing sleeves. She paired the design with, the yellow, with yellow Chloe Gosselin heels and Lorraine Schwartz jewelry. 
Her makeup looked flawless, consisting of sparkly peach eyeshadow, pink blush, and a soft pink glossy lip. Her hair was in a messy yet elegant updo and wore a metal floral headband. And I just think it's important to know she took the sleeves off for her performance, and it was like a whole other dress. It was a whole other dress. I wasn't crazy about the sleeves to begin with, but no, I was way. crazy about the sleeves first of all because they were such a fashion moment. Yeah, but also they were so love story, like so she was Juliet in the tower. And so waiting. was the the freaking the head headband. thing. Oh my god! It's like she, and she played love story, like she was playing with us. She was playing with us. At first, when I was watching, I thought that she was going to do a song. From each album, because at first how she were was. you watching the, the? Well, at first I was just like seeing like updates via like Twitter, Steamy Swifties, and then like if you just check the hashtag of hashtag Taylor Swift, and then once you finally decided to answer my text, I'm sorry because I was on my phone watching a live stream and I didn't want to fucking answer your text and miss the live stream. No, I understand, but I had to let you know that that girl from Pose on Fox was live streaming the whole thing. Right, right, right. So then I got that text and then I was watching and then her live froze. Her live froze, but it was over. Yeah. So she did. Um, but I just have one controversial thing to say. No matter what or how Taylor sings it, I will always hate Shake It Off. Okay, same. No, like, I can't even bear. But you know what? When it first came out, like, we loved it, and it... We loved the music video. No, we loved the whole thing, but it was, like, the, the overplaying of it is what ruins songs. Like, we're going to get there with Thank You Next. You think? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, but for some reason, Shake It Off, just, like, when I hear that beat, I'm like... Mm. No, same, and also, I don't like it because it brings out all, like, the fake fans, like, the bandwagoners who only know that song from the radio. By the way, yeah, the, the room there at Time 100, Shook they, were, the fuck they up. were just, like, screaming to shake it off. It's like, you don't know the words to love story, <coughs> but you know the words to shake it off. Yeah, I actually also love Delicate Acoustically. She did that with Me Haley too. Kyoko. Me too, And when she just, when she is just on a stage with a guitar or the piano, like, there's nothing more special. No, I love when she's on the piano. Like, New Year's Day. New Year's Day, the, um, the music is so beautiful. Yeah. You and should we have to tell you that. Oh, we should. I should. We should also talk about the theory going around that oh. she said, "I want her midnight." So the line in um, New Year's says, "I want your midnight," and she says that it's in the chorus. So she says it like five or six times in the song. And of the clip from last night, in one moment, it appears like she says, "I want her midnight," and obviously, there's a big theory that Taylor is is gay and it's called the Gaylor Swift and I like love that and I would love if she was gay. I don't know if like a part of me just wants to believe it because I would love if like my queen was lesbian but <laughs> I don't think that it is true but she did say it. She did say and it. And there but are a lot of thing if you play devil's advocate when she when she said those lines later on, it sounded like her, but it was definitely your because it was breathy. So she could have just been like extremely breathy and it could have just sounded like her. Or she was dropping a bit of an Easter egg. I don't know. It's like, I, if Taylor was gay, like, she doesn't have to tell us. Like, she's not been the type of person to ever, like, give us official updates on her personal life. That's true. She values her privacy. So, I don't, people are thinking that this countdown is, like, to her coming out. And I'm like, that is so dumb. Like, she would she never do, do that. that. Also, she, like, why would she come out at midnight Eastern? Right, totally. She values her privacy too much. And I, I value that for her. And I would never demand her come out as anything. Me neither. Other than what she is. I agree. No. And I just, I think... There's no way that it's not going to be anything but music. Of course. Like, everyone's, like, it being a fashion line, like, please, it's called merch. No, that's so stupid. But that dress, like, I legit was, like, searching on Google. Like, I know that it was custom and that I can't buy it and that if I could, it would be, like, $30,000. But I got the Honey Browser. Maybe I could get a coupon code. No, the for sure. The Honey Browser? Do you have it? Yes, because I'm always broke and I need to save money. The Toasters told me about it. It is the greatest thing. And they're now a partner of the Toast, but I've been using the Honey extension for, like, maybe two years, and it's the best thing it's ever. It's the best thing ever. Okay. So I, when I'm shopping online, I, I shop at like Sephora, Zara, Revolve has Honey. Um, it's a free tool that connects to your computer browser. It scans the internet anytime you shop online, looking for sales, discounts, coupon codes. That way, when you're about to check out, like magic, it'll automatically apply the best promo code. Like it'll, you see the line. It's literally magic. And it's it goes the craziest every thing. single promo code online and gives you the highest. Sometimes I get free shipping. Sometimes I get 15% off. It's the craziest thing, and I truly love it. Next time you're getting ready to buy anything online, install the Honey extension extension first. Make sure you're really getting the lowest price available. You can add Honey for free. Join honey.com slash toast. That's join honey, J-O-I-N-H-O-N-E-Y dot com slash toast. Honey, the smart shopping assistant that helps save you time and money. Save you money, honey. It's really great. I love that they're sponsoring the toast because like I've truly been using it. The toasters told me about it. No, in the me group. too. It's like amazing, and it's just like so nice to see your um, price go down. And I used to like literally before I would sh check out, be like Forever Twenty One promo code. Oh my god, I, I always used to do that. What was that freaking stupid website called? You An know? annoying one. That An we annoying no one. Use. Like a pr it just gives you a million promo codes that don't that work. don't work. Yeah. Well, but now honey does work. And I that's can't great. believe like Taylor Swift doesn't have to use promo codes. You know what I mean? I wonder if she like. 
I actually wonder this a lot. Is she like ever swipes her credit card? No. Right? Like, what does she pay for? Like, no, she definitely pays for it, but I don't think she acts actively swipes her credit card because all the clothes that she wears, like even her pajamas, like are like stylists. Like, they just bring it to the house and they charge her account. Uh, so there's no physical swiping, but she pays for a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure. But like, does she even have one? You know, like, does she have a wallet? She definitely has a black card. Oh, definitely has a black card. Because she has a private jet. She probably like, bought the private jet. And she's like deaf, like an Amex, like queen points yeah. everything. No, not points, because like, what does she need points for? She doesn't travel. No, but exactly. So I'm sure she has a ton of points. No, I mean, she doesn't fly commercial. I'm just saying in general, oh, she's like card. racking up points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like at some point you're, you're like too rich for points. Yeah, I mean, you're too rich to use points. I just want to say, like, from the time that I met the points guy till now, like, I have truly changed so much. I got a first class trip to Israel for $5.60 with my points. That's so scary. And I was really proud. Brian helped me through the whole thing. That's insane. Yeah, no, it was really great. I'm really proud of myself. And for awesome. me and Ben. It was $5 total or $5 each? Okay, each drama queen. Um, okay, should we jump into the next story? Is there anything else you want to say about yesterday? It's like amazing No, 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 moment. I'm not done. I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm nervous. Um, she, just looked, she just looks so amazing. And so just, radiant. She, we haven't really gotten a lot from her. We haven't gotten past, a lot like, of like six months. glam Taylor. All we've gotten, no, all we've gotten is like little posts that we have to like dissect. This was like just full blown, just like on a silver platter and joy. Yeah. Um, okay. I chose this next story specifically for you. Oh. Because it's an E roundup of sudden goodbyes. How TV shows like Riverdale have responded to the shocking deaths of their irreplaceable stars. Okay. Because it's almost time to say but goodbye to Fred Andrews. Over yeah. a month after the world lost a TV icon with the sudden and tragic passing of Luke Perry on March 4th due to complications from a massive stroke he'd suffered in his home days prior. Wow, that's a long sentence. <laughs> the time has come for the last episode of the Riverdale he ever filmed. Quote, this, week, this week's Riverdale is the last episode Luke filmed, creator Roberto Reiter Ross tweeted on Monday. <clears throat> he continued, as always, Fred's imparting words of wisdom to Archie. A beautiful, true moment between a father and son. Wish these scenes could go on forever. He has previously taken to Twitter in the recent weeks since Luke's passing to pay tribute to the beloved actor. Um, but now they do a roundup. Real, and we don't know how Luke Perry is going to... I, and, I wonder, I feel like they might just like... But here's like a roundup it. of people who died while they were on television, like in Cheers. In Nicholas Cheers. Calstano was cast as Coach Ernie um, on the NBC sitcom Cheers. He'd already been diagnosed with a heart disease, which had been exacerbated by his alcoholism. By season three, his health had worsened and he'd noticeably lost weight. Though he kept the severity of the matter a secret, shortly after Christmas, he was admitted to the hospital due to water in his lungs. After two weeks' stay, he was released from the hospital. Okay, just tell I me. literally have no idea who that is. He appeared in the season finales cold open through the use of discarded footage. His oh. last full episode was filmed in 1984, aired in 1985. His character's absence through the rest of the season was either explained away through jokes or not acknowledged. That's weird. I feel weird. like Fred Andrews might just not be acknowledged or they'll say he like went to like wherever Molly Ringwald lives or something. I don't know. They're definitely not going to re recast him. I think, I don't know. They'll probably touch on it, for sure, because, like, they owe him that. Well, then there also is the example, most um, contemporary example, of Finn in Glee. Oh. So when Corey Monteith sadly passed away from an accidental overdose in 2013, after years of struggles with substance abuse, he was weeks away from beginning work on the fifth season of Glee. So they kind of had, not that this is an ideal situation at all, but, like, it was ideal in the sense that he finished out a season, and they opened the fifth season with his death being, like, he just, like, Finn himself died. Yeah. And all the characters mourned it as Finn, but also as Corey, and I kind of loved that. Oh, like, my God. It was the saddest episode of it was the saddest episode, I've ever watched. But it was so powerful, and at least, like, the show that he, like, grew up on and, like, really, like, became famous on got to acknowledge his life and devote a whole episode to it. I Agreed. thought it was so great. And also great. he was such a like a staple of a character that like they had to have done something. Yeah. And like all of the emotions were so raw because it was like they were all, it was like when they cried they were, it wasn't they. No, I mean like Leah Michelle singing Make You Feel My Love in oh front my of God. the classroom. I like, can't. It was, it was honestly like it was too much for no, me. No, no, no. Like thinking about it I could cry. Naya Rivera singing Die Young. Uh, um, not Die Young. That's Kesha. Um, the oh. band Perry. Oh, yeah. Isn't it if I die, die young, young. There, and she couldn't even finish it because she was crying so much. And they opened it with seasons of love. And then it was Ugh. called The Quarterback. The Quarterback episode. Just oh my like God. such a powerful episode. And I feel like, I mean, Ryan Murphy's a genius and I just love everything he, really he does. He really is a genius. But that was really like the perfect way. And this is like something that happens, like where people who are on TV shows, old or young, like they die while it's on. Yeah. And there's like no perfect way, but I think like, that Glee episode was the best way. But they're not going to do that for So what Fred. do you think they're going to do? I don't know. Like, 
with and I don't watch I, Riverdale I just anymore. Up, so what's going on? Um, like he was in jail. Yeah, but oh, he's not in jail anymore. Okay. And now it's like a whole like other thing with like there's another like girl gang in the 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 farm and Cheryl's part of the farm now and so is Kevin and this whole thing. Sorry. Oh, by the way, if you're behind, um, <laughs> and but the. Fred in the past few episodes like really hasn't been that integral. He's just there for like a side conversation every now and then with Archie, like when he like needs advice or something. So it really he's won't, like a, a, a sage. Yeah. So it really won't be that hard, I think, to write him out because it's not like he has like a like when he was gonna run, when he was running for mayor, that would have been difficult. Right. But that's not what's going on right now. So I, it won't be too hard. Um, it's just like more of a matter of like what's Archie gonna do because like he needs parents. Yeah. Oh, that's true. So it's Molly, Molly Ringwald about might to come, might become a regular. Get signed on for a few more episodes. For sure. That would make sense. Like, he does need parents. Right. How oh, by the way, and Josie and Archie are dating. Josie and Archie. Uh, you know what? I like Josie now, but, like, I will never get past her in season one being so mean about her singing. Like, you know, like, being, like, when Archie wanted to, like, learn how to write songs and, like, she was being such a bully. Like, oh, my God, such a bully. But the Heathers <clears> episode, <throat> oh, my God, honestly, like, that would have been enough for you to stop watching. Do I know? De yeah, that would have been for us. Oh, it was bad, the Heather's episode? I mean, like, I enjoyed it, but it was, like, so cringy. Like, I could just only imagine you watching. And Cole Sprouse sing. I was going to say, I saw a clip of Cole Sprouse singing, and I was truly shook to my, like, No, vagina. no, no. It was really crazy, because he says in every single interview, he's like, I didn't sing for Disney. Like, I'm not singing. Like, now, I made it this far. But I guess, like, Lily asked, you know? And Lily sang, too? Lil yeah, but she always sings. Yeah, and, like, girls just, like, have good voices. No, I think it was, like, a requirement that, like, each of them had to be able to sing somewhat. Like, hold you the tune. When you were in high school, at your graduation, had oh, a solo. come on. You had a solo. And I, unfortunately, didn't make it to your high school graduation because I was, that? I was flown to L.A. to film an episode of Candidly Nicole with Cole Ritchie, Nicole Ritchie, and it sprouted my friendship with Nicole Ritchie, and honestly, I have no regrets. Like, I'm sorry. And I did you, I made something, I made Nicole film a video that's for true, you. That's true, but, like, rude. Okay, like, the fact that you still harbor resentment is, like, why you're a freak. But <laughs> I'm, the only thing I'm upset about is that you had a solo, and... In, in, terms in of the, the climb. In terms of, like, the family and, like, talents, Olivia's always had, like, a fine, like, good voice. Like, Olivia was in her play. I have always had, like, the voice of an angel. And, like, you were just, like, this, like, weirdo, like, <laughs> who, like, never really sang. And But I had solos in everything <clears throat> at my Zimria. Okay, but I don't know, like, what your voice sounds like. Like No, but you're not about to have it happen But, here. yeah, like, you <laughs> won't sing in public. Like, please. No. Like, I just sing with you. But you could, like, shadily, like, have an amazing voice, and we would never know. Don't you worry. I don't. I am taking voice lessons, though. Please. No. Please. If you think I don't do it for you in the privacy of our own home, I'm definitely not going to do okay, it. Okay, what if the toasters like all follow you on Instagram, we get you to 100,000 followers? No, no. No. If I could snap my fingers. I can't. I can't. Know, this is too on the spot. Okay, now I'm sweating. Okay, but if I could snap my fingers and give you 100,000 followers, would you sing The Climb? <laughs> Probably, but no. No. Next. What about Better Man? No. <laughs> You're being annoying. I know. I'm probably, come on. Next story. Fine. Okay, well. We're wrapping that up. Very sad. So this week was the last episode with Fred Andrews or last it's week? It's tonight. If it's you tonight. decide to tune in. No, I'm but not you know that to. every single episode now is dedicated to him. It's like so sad after every episode ends. It comes in big letters in memory of Luke Perry and then his like years. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and that's they said nice. it's gonna be like that for the rest of the season. I mean for the rest of the series. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. That's that's a nice thing. I like when people do things like that. Like in Friends, which by the way we should talk about because Oh, we have to talk about Friends. Because since you last saw Margot on the toast, she has now been converted to a Friends fan by me. Um, but they never addressed 9-11, even though it was like the I pinnacle. Know. Like it the show was on during 9-11. It was like the most New York show ever, and they never addressed it, which part of me thinks is like nice, like it was such a horrible time. Like people were talking about it all the time. It's nice to escape and just watch television. And right. I'm one of those people who believes that like world tragedy is like should stay out of entertainment because it's supposed to be this like escapism. Um, but at the same time, like it really was this iconic New York show and the fact that they didn't address it was like upsetting. But I guess the episode that aired directly after 9-11 um, was dedicated to the people of New York. Like oh. at the end, it's something you could have easily missed. I wonder if I've gotten there yet. You might not have because it's no, in like a later season. No, because it's later seasons. Oh no, I haven't. But also, they didn't address any um, anything with 9-11 in Sex and the City either. Well, Sex and the, me and Jackie have spoken about this. I don't know if Sex and the City was on in 2001. I think it was. Hold on, let me check. I don't have the comments up here, I'm, or I'm Sex sure someone was, and like, the city. was telling us. It was on from, more about this show. Um, oh, yeah, you're right, 1998 to 2004. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. I wonder why. I wonder why, too. But it's like, I get why, but I also get why not. You know? Yeah, I mean, but it's like, who makes that decision, you know? I, like, a, it, would, a it would be up. a writer, Ross, or it would be, like, the creator, Patrick, uh, um, Daniel Patrick's, Patrick Daniel Starr. 
Patrick Star. No, that's, the, that's Sorry. Patrick. What's his name? Darren what? Star. Darren Star and Patrick King. Who the heck's that? The second one. Oh. Like, yeah, it would have been their decision, so I guess they didn't want yeah. to. Okay. Interesting. Interessante. Um, okay, third story is one that me and Jackie actually like have not spoken about um, just because like for a lot of reasons, but I thought we would talk about it with you because you at one point in your life were Britney Spears' number one fan. Oh my God. I had a Britney Spears impersonator at like my birthday seventh party. birthday. And I used to have this ginormous like banner of her in my room and I'd and like you, kiss it every night before I went to bed. And you also had a picture of Britney on all of your birthday cakes. Yeah, I was like obsessed with her, which is so weird because I don't even like remember that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't remember feeling that way about Britney Spears. And like right now, do you like you feel so disconnected from that Britney? Like it's not the same. Oh yeah, like I I forget that they're the same person. But there's a lot going on in the world of Britney. Hashtag free Britney. Britney Spears breaks her silence amid the allegations that she's being held against her will. She says, don't believe everything. So Britney Spears says all is well and just needs, quote, time to deal. The singer broke her silence on Instagram on Tuesday, sharing a video reassuring her fans that she is in good health and made allegations that she is being held against her will at a health facility. Hi, guys. Just checking in with all of you who have been concerned about me. All is well. My family has been going through a lot of stress and anxiety lately, so I just needed time to deal. But don't worry. I'll be back very soon. She also posted a lengthy caption addressing the recent rumors circulating about her health and her family. This is her caption. I just wanted to say hi because things are being said that I've just gotten out of control with three exclamation points. Wow, three exclamation points. The rumors, death threats to my family and my team, and just so many crazy things being said. I'm trying to take a moment for myself, but everything that's happening is just making it harder for me. Don't believe everything you read and hear. These fake emails everywhere were crafted by Sam Lefty years ago. I did not write them. He was pretending to be me and communicating with my team with a fake email address. My situation is unique, but I promise I'm doing what's best in this moment. You may not know this about me, but I'm strong. Oh, and stand up for what I want. Your love and dedication is amazing, but what I need right now is a little bit of privacy to deal with all the things that life is throwing my way. If I could do that, I would forever be, if you could do that, I would forever be grateful. Love you. Um, okay, so. The, Who's Sam? One of her former managers. Oh. The theory now is that like, so she stopped her residency and she was admitted to a mental health facility and they, people are like. They're saying it's against her will. Yeah, just like things that they're seeing on Instagram and like some paparazzi photos. Like people have just surmounted to the fact that she is, put in this facility against her will by like her managers and her family and her dad specifically. Um, and I don't know a lot about Brittany. Me neither. But just like, I hate when people jump to conclusions based off what they see on Instagram like and paparazzi photos. Like it's all so fake. Oh my God, it's and so fake. I, I just feel like she's fine. Maybe she's not fine, but I don't but think she's, she's getting being held. held against her. Yeah. She's not fine, but she's, she's getting She's not fine, held. but she's working on it. And that should just be enough for Maybe us. Maybe she's okay, but she's not. Find it all, oh, oh, oh. cause there we. Sorry, it's okay. I, was, I purposely didn't join in. You're, you're so trying to annoying. Get me but no, now you brought it up. Now it's making self conscious. But I sang with you like ten minutes ago when you sang. Some I'll song. have to re-listen because I wasn't like listening to your voice. I was like. I listening. can just tell you right now, it's not good. Is that enough for you? Diana, Diana. I guess. Okay. Um, like, I just think she's fine. I think she's fine, and too. And the world is, like, shitting their pants. And, like, this, like, hashtag Britney 911 and free Britney. Like, she's good, guys. No, she she's got the 911. She's, she's totally it. fine. Like, no, she's not totally fine, but she's getting help. Like, think about it. She has been on a non-stop, like, working tour album show tour. Yeah, album. we saw this coming, I think. Since she was fucking 16. Like, she had a breakdown already, and, and she's better than she, By the than way, she like, was. I just, I, I understand her breakdown. Totally. Like, when it happened, everyone was shitting their pants, but, like, I get it, man. No, Maybe totally. not the shaving of the head, but like. And there are so many other people, people in her life who definitely like control her money and like her career, and it's frustrating. Um, but I think like in present moment, like it's just best that she's not fully in control and she just like takes a little bit of a backseat. No, I agree. I think that God willing, she'll be fine, and like everyone needs to like chill the fuck out. Totally, and stop just like making judgments about what you see. Like it's so annoying. Like people think they know everything about someone because they follow them on Instagram. You know what I mean? No, hardly. Like you know nothing, Jon Snow. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Justice for Ygrid. No, she could have killed Jon twice and she didn't. Yeah, but he could have killed her back, and he should have. Margot. Sorry. I mean, just like that scene of them in the cave, and when she dies, she's like, "We never should have left that cave. We never should have left that." Cave. I mean, I'm doing like the worst Irish accent. No, I know. I mean, whatever. like I could have known how to do it less. But oh my no, God, she I just, the funniest thing. What? I did a bath time QA and one of the questions was like, who's your celeb crush? And I put a picture of Tormund. Oh my from, god. I, I freaking love Tormund. From Game of Thrones, and this girl DMs me, she's freaking out. She's like, who is she? I guess she doesn't watch Game of Thrones. She's like, who is this? I'm freaking out. He looks just like my boyfriend. Like, why'd you put up a picture of my boyfriend? And she sent me pictures of her boyfriend. And I'm like, 
she's dating Tormund. <laughs> and it was the freakiest thing ever. Like, no beard. But the picture I put up of Tormund didn't have a beard. Yeah, I, I thought that that was like a lookalike when, at first, and then I saw the bearded one. No, when I went to go Google search a picture of Tormund. What's his name? I don't know. Um, he's brave. He's brave? The movie Brave. Oh. <laughs> Um, when I went oh to go God. find a picture of him, like all the news articles were like, you're not gonna believe what Tormund looks like without his beard. And it's true, like he looks like a Disney prince. No, I love him so much. Like, Is the big girl here? Is the big girl. He I've the... always had blue eyes. Like, I don't know why all of a sudden he became, I guess he always was like that great, but he has been so funny this season. He's been so funny. Like, I'm obsessed with Tormund. No, I'm obsessed with Tormund. When I was he in said my... that he got big drinking the, the milk giant. out of a giant yeah. swipe's teeth. Teat, teat, teat. I was in class yesterday, and um, it's this boring ass three hour class about power. And someone, oh my just god, like, really? It's so boring. Yet you're always fucking talking about it. And someone brought up Game of Thrones, and it's all about power. So yeah. my entire class just went in on Game of Thrones, sharing theories and who their favorite characters were. And it's just so interesting how stupid some people are. Is your like you could do your final thesis on Game of Thrones? Oh, I asked if I could do my final thesis about Taylor Swift, and he said. It's already been done, and it wasn't that great because it's not that challenging. And I was like, "It's not challenging. It's She's not powerful." Challenging. I was like, "It's not challenging at all." But she is powerful. She is. She is. But that's why it's not challenging. Like, she's powerful. Bye. No, but like, I could do a deep. No, honestly, it wouldn't be hard for me. Is what his point was. Right. He was just being a dick. Yeah. Essentially. Um. Okay. So, like, we're sending our well wishes and thoughts to Britney Spears. Essentially. Yes. Essentially. Okay. Next story. I just want the best for her, and maybe like she should like retire is an interesting factoid that I found oh. to be, well, interesting okay. from the Daily Mail. Jeopardy contestant becomes the only second, becomes only second in history to win more than a million dollars during four, during his 14 week streak. streak. His name is James Holzhauer, he's 34 years old and he won $118,000 Tuesday, taking his overall winnings to a million dollars. The professional gambler from Las Vegas has already set five one day records. He now wants to match the 74 game two and a half million dollar streak of Ken Jennings in 2004. So, so he so he's a professional gambler and he's smart? I guess, so if you play- Dangerous combo. If you play and you win, like that takes you over to the next day and the next day until right, you win. Right, and right. most people do like one, two, three days. Um, but he's now on a five day streak and he's over a million dollars. That's and crazy. I wanna see what he looks like. Oh, he's a cutie. Oh, he's like a cute little nerd vibe, you know? But he's also a professional gambler. Yeah, wait, look, he's like, he definitely can get it. I wonder if he has a girlfriend, he will now. He will now. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, so he's at a million sixty one thousand five hundred and fifty four. So when you say he's doing this like for the two and a half mil thing, like could he technically lose the rat like his No, you 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 still gather the million, but he needs to keep winning every day because they have new two, the other two contestants are new every day. Right. So he needs to keep beating until his overall amount is two and a half million. Oh my so you have to do like another four. I mean weeks. he technically I think could lose it all. Right. No, I don't think you're allowed to gamble with the previous winnings. Oh, so it's like after each episode you get your winnings, then you kind of ish start at zero at the beginning of the episode yeah. and work your way up. And then it adds and then to it, your... if you win again, it adds to your previous. Oh, that's crazy. But like after taxes, he's not right. getting that much. Well, where do they film? Um, oh, I guess with, it's where he lives. Like if he lives, when we were in South Carolina, I was looking up the tax bracket, like the highest tax bracket is 7%. Is that how it works with the lottery too? If you win in South Carolina or something, you get taxed the seven percent, or mm -hmm. you get taxed like a oh, ton. actually, that's income tax. I don't know if you consider like lottery winnings income, um, and also you have to pay federal taxes, and the federal is always more so mm. difficult. Difficult. Um, I don't think I could literally ever be on an episode of Jeopardy. Like I've watched, and there's maybe one question that I like have heard of the people. I didn't even get it right, but I've heard of the book, you know? No, no, no. And it's like, I'll watch one time and I'll know one answer that they don't know. And I'll be like, are you fucking kidding? Ah. You're so stupid. <laughs> then, then again, it's like, I don't know any other one. And like, if they did a Taylor Swift themed Jeopardy, I could do it. I could do it, I think. I think too. But it's like, there's like, there's some things I don't know, you know? like. When people ask like those stupid questions, like like dates of things, like when did blah 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 come out? Like I don't know things like that. I used to know stuff about like no, that, and it's like, like Montana. The people but. who go on Jeopardy, like who are they? Is it like teachers? Had, and also, is there a book? Do you know, like that you study? study, like flashcards mm -hmm. for sure. It's like you just have to know everything about everything. Exactly, that's why I asked. But I don't think that they, they would give you a study guide. No, I definitely think that's not, not how it works. So you just have to automatically just know everything. I love Alex Shrek. Me too, and I'm, I hope he like is doing okay. I know, me too. I'm like, I think about him a lot. Me too. Like, I'm not ready. Well, I hope this guy James can take it all the way and like maybe find himself a nice wife if he's not already married. 
Hopefully he's already married, because now, now he won't know if they're in it for the money or not. Did you also see the guy who won the um, $768 million Powerball, but like took a month to come forward? So like it was a huge press, like, um, what's it called? Uh, Ordeal. Press conference yesterday. Uh, oh, oh. Give, him giving a statement saying he like couldn't believe it and he was like scared. That and so it's like it's scared all that what I don't know. It's a little weird. I'm sure they're checking it out like hardcore. Yeah. But like, but he was so cute and like if he did win, like I really hope it's real because it, what is he like a cute old man? He, no, he's like a cute young. He's 24. Like oh, he's never gonna have to work another day in his life. And he's just like he's from Wisconsin and he was like I just felt good. I bought ten dollars worth of tickets and I just checked the last one. And he's like when I got the first, he's like I've done it before. So like. I never get the first number. Like sometimes right. I'll get like the Powerball number or like the fifth number. But one of my tickets, I won $4 and I was like freaking out because like that never happens. And then for the other one, like I got the first number and like I was freaking out because like you never get the first number. And then I got the second and the third and he was like, I literally couldn't believe it. I'm just like a little confused as to why it took him so long. Right, like I understand maybe waiting a few days because like you want to wait for it to die down and like not have someone like jump you for yeah. the ticket. But now a month is a little weird. But like they'll, fi they'll figure it out. Where is he from? Wisconsin. Oh, nice. I just feel like it'll be really good for him. No, that um, could you imagine? I've, I bought a lot lottery ticket like twice in my life. I've never like even gotten a semblance of close to. Oh my god! When me and Ben were in Chicago, for, no, no. Um, where did me and Ben go for a show? Oh, oh no, it was me and you um, in Columbus or Cincinnati. We went out to lunch. Oh yes, yes. And we went to this toy store that was like a prank toy store, and we had like they got like silly putty and like all this stuff. And as we were checking out, there were fake lottery tickets that were like automatically guaranteed to win ten thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and we were sitting in the lobby with my former manager, and we like pretended to do it. We were literally being actresses. I was like, I won! Oh my god, it was so it funny. It was so funny. That's a great prank. It is a great. We should have like gotten stuff to take home. When the guy was like, "It's a fake lottery ticket," I like literally didn't understand. I'm like, "So you win?" Like I was so confused. <laughs> no, it was really funny. It was honestly like kind of sad. It was really sad. Yeah, <laughs> it was kind of mean. Um, before we deliver our fifth and final story, and then jump into a Taylor Swift like Q&A that we got from the Steenie Swifties group. I'd like to tell everyone about another sponsor of the Toast. It's Squarespace. Okay. And you're now getting a job, like building your resume. You need a website, by the way. Do I? Yeah, like everyone who's applying for jobs, anytime someone <sighs> applies for a job for me, they'll send me their website. And I'm like, are you an artist? They're like, no, it has links to like their resume and their Instagram. It's really um, interesting. Just another thing I need. And you're going on an interview today. Did you print out your resume? Six times. Okay, maybe, maybe. That's why should... I'm wearing this, by the way. Okay, so Squarespace is all in one. Domains, websites, online stores, marketing tools for websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business or promote yourself, Margo. And they have a new feature for email campaigns. You can say more, sell more, stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Their all-in-one platform makes it easy to unify your brand voice from your homepage to your emails. Consistent content from website to email, powerful editing tools to make it your own. So if you can head to squarespace.com slash toast, you get a free trial when you're ready to launch. Use the offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. We started using Squarespace with um, uh, our Camp Toast website, which is still being worked on. Um, and I just feel like it'd be really good for your brand, Margo. Yeah, damn, I might have to do it. Like a portfolio with a headshot. Oh my God, I don't have a headshot. I need to get a headshot. I just took new headshots and it was honestly like the hardest day of my life. No, it's I had, like so, so many hard looks. to look pretty face on. Do you and know what I like, mean? And like in an awkward setting. No, but not even that. Just like a lot of the times it's like when you're like this, like this, this is cute for me, but like this, it's not. Do you know what I mean? So like getting a good picture like that is truly impossible. A headshot can be the side profile too. Like if you want to, like Olivia's headshot is Like her my LinkedIn picture is a picture that like we took on vacation a hundred years ago. What like, is it? It's just like me at dinner, like, but like it's like, and it's like, no, it, I'm covered and it's normal, but it's like, I look so young. No, LinkedIn pictures are truly so awkward. It's so awkward. But I didn't know that LinkedIn is like such a thing. Like, yeah. I like now I've like been spending my time on LinkedIn. Like, people like update their status. Like, Olivia updates her status. Olivia and got it's a new just job. like, you just like, and like people, I always see like my friends like liking things. And I'm just really? like, I didn't know that this is like a platform people go on. Like, I have day. a LinkedIn like from 100 years ago. I know, I checked it. What does it say? Um, absolutely, like nothing relevant right now. There are people who are like LinkedIn influencers. A friend of mine used to um, work for Ryan Serhan, who's on Million Dollar Listing, and her job was literally just accepting people on LinkedIn because he's like a LinkedIn influencer. Interesting, I haven't hit 500 yet. You haven't? Oh I God. get like picky, cause like it's like sometimes I like just don't want to connect with some people. Why, who cares? I don't know. You're free. I know. Um, okay, so our fifth and final story is from Paper Magazine, and it's uh, Taylor Swift stands give us their pr predictions for 426. So Paper Magazine spoke to a lot of like people who run Taylor Swift fan accounts, Twitter accounts, um, and what they think is gonna happen. So let's go through. Um, the person who runs TS Updates New York. 
We believe that Taylor will release the brand new lead single for her seventh album, release the music video for the song, and release the album title and artwork. She'd possibly put it up for pre-order too. We believe it's music, we don't think it's anything else. Even if it's something else, it will still come with music. Her team wouldn't spend money on promotional billboards in eight countries for music not to be involved. Agreed, but I don't Agreed. think all that's happening on Friday. No, I don't know if we'll get album cover and title, but definitely lead song and maybe a video. And maybe a video, or it, or she's gonna have the video premiere at the BBMAs. Oh my God, I'm gonna be there. That's my call. This is from Taylor Swift Facts. Hmm, for me she's teasing her TS7 album, single, plus music video, other than album, single, or music video, maybe marriage. That is the worst call. The worst call. call. Taylor would never, Taylor doesn't feel um, like she owes us an update on her life. And like you want to know why she doesn't? It's because her fans are so amazing. Her fans, there are a lot of fans who feel entitled. Like, I'm your fan, I support you, I demand to know everything about you personally, professionally, career wise. And Taylor Swift's fans, like, don't have that sort of entitlement. And she never feels like she has to give updates. Like, I broke up with this person, me and this person are together. Like, when she breaks up with someone, like, I don't even know how we know. Right. And also, like, Taylor Swift fans, like, get mad when, like, paparazzi takes pictures of, of her Taylor. on vacation because yeah. they value her privacy just as much as she Which does. Which is, like, how lucky is she? And I love she? that respect. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is from Swiftness13. My guess is Taylor will drop the lead single from TS7 and based on the visuals from her Instagram, possibly the music video too. There's finally some links between the visuals, so I'm guessing they're either album visual or album artwork or they're from a video. I, I think everyone's a pretty much in agreement. And not an album artwork because that's not what I want for album artwork. We all know that Taylor loves to drop hints by hints and clues by clues. As you can see, there's seven palm trees on the tree post. It represents her past seven album, her past albums, and the other one is her current album. She's dropping the album on the 26th because Taylor loves to drop album dates in the 20s, except for Reputation. I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't think that's true either. What do you think TS7 will sound like? I think, I really, really, not because I wanted to, but I really think it's going to be like country pop. So far, we have bets placed on retro 90s, probably disco or synth heavy pop. What? It'll be most similar to 1989, but still different. With Taylor, you never know what you're going to get, and you're not going to get the same thing twice. We think nostalgia will be a theme, or like memories, or something along those lines. Maybe stuff about her childhood, too, or just general reminiscing, and obviously love songs about Joe. Um, I really hope it's not disco or no, late 90s. Well, something interesting that really sparked the debate with Jackie yesterday Ugh. was... Um, I had said that I think TS7 will be a lot of music that TS6 was supposed to be. Right. And that a couple of years ago, before Taylor, Kanye, whole thing happened, Taylor was getting ready to release a new album because it had been over a year since 1989. And as she was gearing up, like, making the proper preparations, this whole thing happened and she, like, went into a hole and hid and, like, wrote all this music about Kanye and her reputation and released that first because it was something she had to say. But she still has this cachet of music. Um, and Jackie was saying that she didn't feel like it would be authentic to to Taylor and saying that like she didn't she wouldn't have shown any growth if she's releasing old music which is so stupid because she just started performing Better Man when Better Man is an old song. Okay, here's my opinion. Um, I don't think that the entire album would be old music. I think if anything it would be a mix of the two and I, I, I get that but I wouldn't really mind because I still do want to hear the songs that she made back then. So if she doesn't if she doesn't put them out now, she's never going to do it. So I wouldn't mind if like three or four are from back And by the way, way like, I really I hope that they are because I don't want them to get lost. Like Me too. If, That's if this whole thing, we never hear them again. If this whole Kanye thing a, a, ends up in us losing some premium Taylor Swift songs, like I'll be pissed. I'd be pissed. No, and also like I feel like those songs are definitely like so good because like that was a lot of drama with like Calvin and all of them. So it's like she deserves to put that out there and we deserve to hear it. But I don't think the whole album is going to be old. But, like, what's what's the difference if two songs or three songs are old? And I some are new. More. Like, it's really not that big of a deal. Let her do her own thing. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Because it's like... I trust her creative The genius. music that she's releasing doesn't have to be about the last year of her life. Because, like, she wrote... There are songs... What I said yesterday is there are songs on Reputation that you could argue are about John Mayer. You know what John I mean? John Mayer. Yeah. And that was... 10 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think she has this cachet of music. Like, she probably has a notebook with over 500 songs that she could just pick and write an album at any time. That's, like, so just Like, Babe crazy. was just, like, a piece of dirt on the floor. That she pulled out. Crazy. And just, like... Okay, so I did a post in Steeny Swifties, which is our, if you listen to our podcast, you know that you are eligible to get into the Morning Toast Facebook group, which is really big, and there's a long line to get in, and once you get in, you're eligible for subgroups, and one of our subgroups is the Steeny Swifties, and it's just for, like, it's really a safe space, because, like, it's a safe space. even the main group is, like, always talking shit about Taylor, and it's just, like, it weighs heavy on my heart, so... I did a master post asking for like questions about Taylor, things we want to talk about. Um, so I'm just going to run through. Ali Gaglione, Speak Now is her greatest album. Change my mind. I'm not changing your mind because I couldn't agree more. I've been saying this for years. For years, Speak Now is the best album. Long Live is the best song. Okay, maybe that could be argued with All Too Well. 
but Speak Now is truly so good. And it tells so many stories. Oh my God, I, I agree. I'm not changing your mind, Allie. I, I really agree. like teeter between which are her best albums because I really feel like Red, Fearless, Speak Now, and 1989 are all fantastic. I understand, but if you take them one by one, like in Red, there she has some bangers. State of Grace but, all too well. But there's a lot of Red. songs that are like, yeah. Like, yes, I agree. Begin again. But and then in Speak Now, like honestly, every single song is good. Like you can't name one that's like that's meh. true. You can't name one that's meh. I, that, I feel that way about 1989 as well, and Fearless though. Okay, I understand like, about 1989. Forever I get it. and always. Hey Steven. Hey Steven. You belong yeah. with me. Like so many bangers. Yeah, I, I yeah. But just like Speak Now has holds a special place in my heart. Maybe it's because we watched that the Speak Now live concert like every day in high school, and that, those were my my transformative years. I think so maybe that's why it's like very just. And the weirdest part about how I fell into like Taylor Swift obsession is when we were in high school. There used to be a Radio Shack around the corner from our house. Like remember when Radio Shack? Yeah, were I thing? remember it. And mom was always sending me on errands to fucking Radio Shack for like things for the house phone. It was so annoying. <laughs> oh yeah. And I went, and like she gave me her credit card to like get some like fucking bullshit for the house, and I was like pissed that I had to go. And at the register, there was a DVD of the Taylor Swift tour and I was like you know what she made me run this errand I'm buying myself the DVD and, and I it bought it it changed our lives it we changed watched it our every lives. day after school we watched it every day on repeat every weekend like and that is really how I fell into like being such a big fan of her. me too because like I can honestly say like when Fearless and like all the, that stuff came out I liked the songs but like I didn't really like pay attention to the woman behind the song or right. like her so, story or any of that but when Speak Now came out like my life was truly changed. So it's honestly like the lesson here is do errands for your mom. Yeah and go to Radio Shack. Um, okay Danielle Ashley interested. what is your favorite tour of Taylor's? Tour? Well I was very upset that I didn't make it to Reputation Tour because I was in Israel and it's just something that I have to live with for the rest of my life but that being said I still don't know that it would have been my favorite. 1989 was just, was yeah. really. 1989, or I just was watching uh, Journey to Fearless, and yeah. Fearless is really like, it was such a moment for her because she was like so young, yeah, and it's so impressive, but I think 1989 was the most impressive because of what she did to her own music. Like, I thought 1989 was great, but after watching it on tour and then watching the video a hundred times, like, I really thought it was even better than originally. Like, what she did to Out of the Woods. What she did to Out of the Woods. Because when Out of the Woods came out, I would have put it on my least favorite songs. Top five worst songs. Me too. And when she remastered it, I, I want to say it is maybe her best song. No, it's... Remember when you hit the brakes too soon. And, like, she performed that also at the at Grammys. The Grammys. Like, I've watched that performance 800 times. So uh, uh, there's, like, a big theory, people thinking that what she's teasing is, like, a remastered album. I wouldn't and be, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad because I do want to, at some point in my life, get those, like, the remastered. But I, I feel like that's something you do, like, at the end of your career. Yeah, or and it's, this like, is not the end. Margo, it's, like, her... What she did on 1989 tour with Enchanted and Wildest Dreams. Okay, and what she did with Long Live and New Year's Day, which by the way are like one of my, two of my two favorite songs. It's like she's like, Margo, I'm doing this for you. You know, she has the perfect way of like blending her own songs. And even what's it called? Bad Blood and Should Have Said No. Oh, that was so oh, good. So good. But I think out of all those, Enchanted Wildest Dreams is the best. Yeah, I mean. Hi. By the way, did you notice that last night she didn't do the high note? In what? In Shake It Off. Oh, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't want Shake It Off because I really don't like so that. So you song. know when she was like, yeah. Oh, she shouldn't do it. I love that part. I know, but I think it's just because it's like too small of a room for oh, such a high Oh, totally. Note. And like they're not worthy. Yeah. Top five Taylor songs of all time and then top five worst. Okay, top so five. So let's agree on the top five. Okay. Long live and all too well, for sure. Long live and all too well. New romantics. Okay. Um, love story. It's, it's such a good song. When I was hearing it last night, like I was like, this is a freaking banger. Okay, love story. And the fifth one should come from Speak Now. I, long live Speak Now. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, Enchanted. Oh. Um, the reason why I love Enchanted so much, it's like, the song is great, but the premise behind it is so lovely. Like, Lelani. she She was at a party, and like she met the lead singer of Owl City, or one of those bands. Wow, it's and about like, him. And she like had a little crush on him, but she just thought he was like so nice, and they like had like a little connection. Like nothing ever came of it, but like she was just so enchanted to meet him. Oh my and god, he that wrote, song is so good. He yeah. wrote a rebuttal song, like being like, "It was enchanting to meet you too." What? Like it clearly it, went nowhere. Yeah. Um, okay, so the fifth song. But it, no, I feel like the fifth should maybe be from Reputation. No. Not one. No. Uh, yeah, I guess not one of them is like, is like, like maybe like a style blank space. No, please. Okay, fine. No, please. Okay. 
whatever. Top or five. State of Grace. Oh, State of Grace. Oh okay. my God, sorry. There. Top That's five worst. Shake it off. Shake it off. Look what you made me do. Really? Like, yes. I just don't think Margo. it's that bad. All right, Horrible. All right. You can you can get that one. Um. Um. Oh. Oh. Um. I don't. Okay. Come I, in with the rain. Oh yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. How do you feel about how you get the girl? Love it. Okay. I love it. Never mind. Nothing on 1989 is going to be on the worst list. Okay. Um. Nothing from Speak Now either. Truly. No. Um. And I can't like something from Red. Oh, for sure. Um, the one with Ed Sheeran. Oh, everything has changed. <laughs> I totally agree. And I know this is controversial, but I do not like Begin Again. Um, but it's definitely not like the worst. It's not the it's worst. It's just like, it's a fine song. Yeah, there's uh, honestly, we like, have one more. The Lucky One. I like that song. There's a lot of stuff on oh, that. You know what's like. also one of her best songs? It's so cute. The Best Day. Oh my God. Totally. <laughs> you know what's really one of her best songs that's so cute? Ronan? No, oh, for sure. But um, ours. Oh, this love is and I just realized everything I have is someday gonna be gone. How sad is that? Yeah. It's so true. Like, every now and then, like, when you're just living your life, you realize, like, one day everyone's gonna be dead. Yeah. Let's not talk about that. I know, but, like... What's the fifth one? Um, I don't know. I have one. What? I did something bad. Yeah, it's not great. Like it's not great. It's not good. Um, what is a favorite Taylor lyric? Like one that really resonated with you. We, we know. We know. What? From All Too Well. Oh, I mean all of All Too Well. All of All But there the are lyrics. But there are lyrics. Are there lyrics that you live by? Like mine, I have two lyrics from New Beginning. I mean New Romantics that like changed my life. Like, because maybe I could build a castle out of all the bricks they threw at me. Yeah, you do live by that one. Um, and also. People throw rocks at things that shine, but life... Um, this is on the spot for me. I can't think of one, like, right now. Okay, another lyric that really resonated with me, not personally, just, like, really made me realize how good of a songwriter she is, is, um, handsome, you're a mansion with a view. Because I didn't really understand what that meant, but then someone made me realize, you're a mansion with a view. So you're beautiful on the outside and the inside. How crazy is that? I just that? got actual chills. I know. That's crazy. Honestly, every lyric in Long Live, because like Long Live, I don't know why I love Long Live so much. It's just like, it says so many things. It's like, it could be about you and your friends, just like. But it's about her and her fans. No, I know, but I'm talking about if you want to relate it to your life, because I don't have fans. Maybe I do. Um, can you discuss Casey on following Taylor? I didn't know that, and I'm feeling really I didn't perplexed. know that. I don't know if she ever followed her, but Rustin just covered all too well, so why would he do that if There's like a weird terms? thing, because when, Ta when Casey Musgraves released pageant material, there's a song, uh, The Boys Club. And people think it's a dig at um, Taylor. Taylor because um, another gear in a big machine. So they think it's like big, big machine like is Taylor's, was Taylor's label. Oh. So people thought it was a dig at her. But the song is called Boys Club. So I don't know why I, it would be that. That like could, I don't think so. No, but Casey's just not like friendly. Like she's not like into being friends with other yeah. country or whatever. So I agree. They obviously respect the hell out of her because Rustin released an all too well cover. So I'm not digging. I'm not. Gonna, I don't. I'm not supporting the claim that they're like. I just don't think they really have anything to do with each other. But I'm sure like they listen to each other's music. No, and like Casey unfollowing it. Taylor. It's like it's not like they're friends. So it's just like you unfollow celebrities. You know. That's true. And like <coughs> Taylor doesn't follow her. Talk about how you feel about the level of secrecy and lack of transparency that occurs with Taylor as opposed to other pop stars. Do you think it makes her more addicting? Um, like the I don't seriousness. Really, I don't really mind it. I actually kind of like it better because it's like Ariana Grande like posts every single thing she does and like now it's just I kind of find it annoying. Yeah. But I still follow her. But it's like with Taylor, it's like she just like gives us what she wants us to hear. And, and like, what we need to survive. And what we need to see and what, whatever. And like if that's what she thinks. And also like she is, her her fame is so out of control that if this is what she needs to do to get some semblance of privacy, like I'm fine with that. I couldn't agree more. Um, so when did you guys start becoming obsessed with her? So I think we answered that. Like we were really like Speak there now. from the beginning. Also like, um, no, I remember I used to, when I lived in the Purple Room, I used to literally listen to Teardrops we on my guitar. We lived in the Purple Room together. Oh, I, yes, and that music video, you used to watch it all the time, and our song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, our song. Like, mm -hmm. we really were there from day one. and that, like, I guess we were. I never really realized. That's what makes me, like, really proud. Do you me know too. what I mean? I wish we were, like, those people, though, who had, like, gone to her concert. But you know what was, it was? Like, it was, like, and I was just saying this when I did my Instagram Live. It was, like, when I was a kid, like, you know those kids who, like, just, like, their parents, like, buy them whatever they want? Yeah. Like, I had no control over what I could get. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
no, if I wanted did to, used to have the iTunes password. You and know what I mean? Like in. tickets to a concert. Like, oh yeah. If I wanted to go to a concert, like it was just like no. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like yeah. I love that I wasn't given everything I wanted growing up because those kids are monsters. But like, I, there's a part of me that like regrets never having gone to the Speak Now tour. Do you know me what I mean? Me too. But like honestly, oh to the Speak Now tour. Yeah, we could have somehow finessed that. We could have never really finessed like Fearless. Like honestly, we were so young. There was a rumor long before 1989 that uh, was going to be called Roses, and now the merch she's wearing has roses on it. Maybe this next album or single will be called Roses or different name of a flower. Flowers seem to be like a big flowers, theme. I wouldn't mind that. Or lilies, like that's cute. But I hope that's not the name of the album. No, me too. It's like a little basic. And okay, I have a question for you. Do you actually think that Step Into the Daylight and Let It Go will be a lyric? No. Me neither. Step Into the Daylight and Let It Go was one of those. Um, Essay. Yeah. Um, but people she just doesn't, like took it She doesn't it reuse. And, yeah. Because Step Into the Daylight and Let It Go was really like the, the mantra of this entire Reputation. Like, and this yeah. transitional period for yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Um, tell us your favorite Taylor conspiracy. Mine is that oh. she used to leave her apartment in those, um, like, luggage equipment cases. And I think it's totally true. I came up with a theory. Which, Remember the pregnancy one? No. That when she took her year and a half off, because she always said that, like, she, doesn't, she didn't know if she'd have kids just because, like, it would be really crazy for the kid and, like, kind of annoying for them. And so when she took that year and a half off, like, what if she had a kid? And now, like, nobody would know who her kid is or anything like that, and she could have a kid and have the joy of being a mother, but nobody knows who the kid is, so the kid isn't tortured. That was my conspiracy theory. Interesting. Thank you. Um, where will you be listening on 426 Mid-90s Certain? Will you insta-story your reaction like you did with Look What You Made Me Do? So, we were on, we will be on the plane. By the way, you know that we heard Look What You Made Me Do together. In the on Bahamas. The, yeah, we were on that, like, shuttle. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we will be on the plane to Stagecoach, but... Thankfully, JetBlue has great Wi-Fi and streaming. So Spotify so most likely what, should work. It'll be what, 9 o'clock? It'll be 9 o'clock California time, but we'll still be on the plane. Well, yeah, we'll be, like, preparing for because landing, Because we though. land at 10. Yeah. So, no, it'll be an hour before. Oh, my God. Okay, like, what are we going to do? We're just going to, like, shit our pants. I want to make a reaction and, video, like, in the bathroom. And we are uh, sitting next to each other. Oh, my God. I paid $100 to move into a middle seat to sit next to my sister. Yay. An extra leg room. Um... Wait, uh, what do you think her most underrated song is? Um, underrated song. Um, I don't know, because it's like, I feel like the, the fandom is so on top of it that like when they find a gem, like they, right. they exploit it, you know? Not in a bad way, but just in general. Um, I would say like New Romantics. New Romantics isn't, ex I was going to say that. It's not under whatever the word was. Because baby, I could be. It's the best song. Oh, I feel like like a, like a Wonderland. Yes. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, do you think her and Harry Styles were a good match? Yes. I think about them all the time. Weirdly. I think they were horrible for oh each other. Oh, my God. Other. I think they were great for each other, and I think they miss each other. That's my theory. What is your favorite relationship of hers? Um, Harry or uh, Kennedy. Mine is John Mayer. Like, and I know and we, never got, to, we never got to see paparazzi pictures of them, and like, we only know that they dated from the songs. But I, like, I totally get that moment she was in. Like, she was this up-and-coming songwriter. And if you ever watch a YouTube video, like, Every time John Mayer has said something nice about Taylor Swift. Yeah. Because before they became enemies and they dated, they were writing songs together. They wrote Half of My Heart together. Such and they, a good song. And now it went into oblivion. And like, and before that, they were just like friends who were like, were writing together. And he, they became like, and it wasn't in the age of Instagram, so like, we didn't really know about it. But right. it's kind of how like, um, I don't know, they were just like admirers of each other. And like when Taylor would get an award, he would be the one to give it. It's like how Harry Styles and Stevie Nicks are like, yeah, weirdly friends. So there was just like this mutual like respect for each other and... It, and it was like, she was just like this newcomer and like he was like the hot bad boy and like she got him. And like, I'm sure she was just like so excited about it. Yeah. And like that it didn't end up the way that she wanted and that he wasn't a better man was upsetting. But like, I don't know, there's something about like, I was so happy for her. Like you've like, you know what it's like when you like someone like older and cooler. Oh like, my God, totally. And like she got him and like, I was just, I'm so happy for her. And that's why I think it was like really hard for her and that's why I think a lot of her songs are about Me him. Me too, just not even about him, but just like the way that he made her feel. Right. Um, and I also really loved her and Calvin, and I know that that was, like, a toxic relationship for her, and it ended really badly. But while but it was going on, like, they were pretty, like, just, She like, was just so cool and normal, like, yeah. going to Vegas with the Hame girls, like, getting a table at, like, yeah. at her boyfriend's yeah, yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I loved it. Me too. I just love what she gave us from that time. I don't know that I loved Calvin, but, like, yeah, I agree with that. Um, this is, like, a hard question. If Kim Kardashian and Taylor were falling off of a cliff, who would you save? I really don't know. I hate when people do this. 
Like, stop, stop I know. putting them against each other. I mean, like, I they're not going to be on a cliff because they don't hang out. Yeah. Um, thoughts on Hiddle Swift, that era. That was weird. I didn't like it. That was weird, and I still don't get it. And, like, and also, I just don't think he's cute. Like, no, I was like, down for everything except for him. Yeah. Like, there was so much that didn't make sense. Um, what do you think about Wendy Williams saying she's over Taylor? I didn't even hear that. Well, I'm, care, over I'm over Wendy Williams. Williams. Margaret, you took the words truly right ever out of my mouth. Um... The Selena Gomez of it all. Like, they have a weird friendship, and they've always, like, had a true friendship. But, like, Taylor's really on the straight and narrow and, like, doesn't fuck around and, like, drinks champagne for fun. And Selena is is not in a good place. Right. So I feel like their friendship's weird. I think their friendship's weird, but I do think that Taylor is, like, a very stable friend for Selena, yeah. which I think is rare. And so I think that um, while Selena, like, does have her issues and Taylor doesn't, I think Taylor's has been a very good friend to Selena and will continue to because like Selena like has like issues and she's not gonna just run away run away when her friend needs her. Yeah, and I feel like every time Selena's trying to get her life together, she hangs out with Taylor. Taylor. She's just hanging out with Taylor all the time. Um, do you support or dismiss the notion that girls who blindly dislike Taylor Swift are not nice girls? I support it. No, they just don't understand, you know? No, and it's no, so frustrating. It's that they don't want to understand, which means that they are not understanding people, which right. means that they are just stubborn and annoying. It's like if you have no, like, interest in even hearing the other side, like, I can't, like, I, when, I just can't relate to you. When people, like, okay, when people, like, don't like Taylor, I literally ask them why. Right. And if it's not the same thing, But like, I'm willing to hear the other side, or not why they don't like, like, why they don't think she's everything. People are like, her voice sucks. And, you know what, I can, like, like I said, a good part of being a, 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 a real stan is hearing all the good, the bad, the ugly. And while Taylor vocally is not comparable to like an Ariana Grande, like what's mo most impressive to me about Taylor is everything else. In addition to like, she has a great voice, but it's like the songwriting and I the agree. imagery and the way she makes people feel. And it's like Ariana Grande's voice is incredible and her, vo her, her, her songs make me, you know, bop. But never once have I listened to an Ariana Grande song and felt like half the feelings that I feel when I, I listen agree. to it, even Taylor Swift's worst song. I agree. So it's like, and trying to emulate that to people who don't understand is so frustrating. But also some people might just not care. Like they just might care more so just about like a song that's a bop that they can sing along to as opposed to like taking the time to listen to the lyrics and like understand. So like they might not be mature enough to understand how great Taylor is. And people just like hate celebrities for no reason sometimes. And people just love to hate people that everyone loves. So It's so true. I just like, I can't be bothered. Yeah. I have better things to do with my life. But you do that because everyone loves Beyonce and you hate Beyonce. It's not that I don't hate Beyonce. I just like I just like don't get it. Okay, that's fair. But I think that she like is an amazing dancer. Has an amazing like. Don't get me wrong. I understand the talent. The talent. But like yeah. I'm just not like attracted to this, what she's sound. giving me. Yeah. I have like started to. I mean like I appreciate Beyonce so much. Like that video of her in the back of the car from the HBO documentary. Her practicing listen. Oh, I didn't watch. Oh my God, you had to watch that video. It's like from her HBO documentary. It was just this one moment where she was about to perform something and she in the car she's on her laptop and she's just playing listen and she's practicing the, the lyrics and I've never heard anyone sing better in my life. Like, <laughs> it's the craziest thing. And her talent is so undeniable. But I just don't... Undeniable, but why can't people say that about Taylor? Her talent is undeniable. You don't have to love everyone that everyone loves. Right. But you can be appreciative. Like, I don't hate Beyonce, no, and and everyone, I, but I appreciate what she does. Everyone in the world appreciates Beyonce. Even if you don't like her, her music, they appreciate her. And it's like, everyone, either with Taylor, it's like, either you're obsessed with her or you hate her, and it's so annoying. I agree. I do, I believe that Taylor should get the same amount of respect that Beyonce gets. Yeah. But I think Beyonce deserves that respect. Me but too. I think Taylor does also. No, totally. I, and... No, and I'm not trying to pit women against another woman. Like no, Beyonce, me neither. They're so different. They're so different, and in their own right. And it's really impressive that like the two of them are like the only artists, regardless of gender, who like sell out stadiums continuously. Yes, you know, and, like, agreed. They both hold records. They're they, they're they're competing like with competing each other with their records. Yeah, it's great, and I love that. And they're both uh, fantastic. I just wish like a, some like I just wish people would respect Taylor. Like me too. It just upsets me. You know? Me too. I agree. But then, like, if everyone was respecting her and being obsessed with her, then we'd be annoyed. You know what I mean? But that's true. I kind of like that, like, people don't like her because, like, then I'm special. You I know? agree. Exactly. I feel like I'm in on something, like, special. <sighs> well, this felt really good to just, like, talk yeah, about. Yeah, I feel lighter. I feel lighter, I feel too. like I lost some weight. Um, so, here's what's going on. Tomorrow, we will be a podcast-only episode because we are heading to Stagecoach. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be at Stagecoach, so make sure to follow along on The Morning Show's Instagram, on our Instagrams. And we're also going to be filming a Patreon vlog for Stagecoach, which will be our final episode of the month. So make sure to subscribe at patreon.com slash The Morning Toast. So yes, look out for tomorrow's episode in the podcast app. And we will see you next week. Have an amazing... Oh, but you know, because then me and Jackie are going to the Billboard Music Awards. So we're flying to LA and then to Vegas. So we're going to be doing podcasts next week as much as we can. Um, there will be no live shows next week until like Friday, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Bye, guys. Love you.